Today, I want to have a really honest discussion about the powerful connection between loving your skin and loving yourself. If you've ever struggled with a really debilitating skin condition, you will probably already know that it can be really hard to love yourself when your skin is just not cooperating with you and doing what you want it to do uh, and causing you so much pain and grief. So today I want to really have a discussion about that between the connection between skincare and self-love uh, and just talk through some of the things that have helped me and also that I think might be able to help you guys as well. If you are new to the show, then welcome. This is the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I am your host, Lauren Lee, and I am the founder of K-Beauty Store Style Story and also K-Beauty brand Jellico. This podcast is brought to you by Style Story, where you can shop all the latest K-Beauty products online at stylestory.com.au. And this show is where we explore all different kinds of topics around skincare, around how to care for our skin, uh, makeup, lots and lots of different things. And today I really want to have a more deep discussion with you and what has prompted me, I guess you could say, to, to talk about this is that September the 9th, at least in Australia, is a day called Are You OK Day? And Are You OK Day is a suicide prevention charity from Australia and what they aim to do is to start life-changing conversations and create a more connected world and the idea was really really quite simple about why this whole thing came about and that is you don't need to be an expert to reach out you just need to be a good friend and a great listener so asking those words are you okay to somebody in your circle Uh, is just a way to help us to connect with the people around our life and particularly also to maybe start a conversation with someone that might be struggling. So I think that's actually a really, really powerful message. Um, And I think it can sometimes get lost, particularly everyone is so busy. Everyone feels even more disconnected in the world at the moment. I know uh, as an Aussie living overseas, it's next to impossible for me to go home to Australia at the moment, even if I want to because the borders are shut. Uh, There are just no flights going. There's a cap on how many people they let in. It's a two-week hotel quarantine. So it's all a bit of a schmozzle. And I know that particularly now people are feeling a bit more disconnected than ever. They probably haven't seen some of their friends and family and loved ones for a very long time. So I think the message of Are You OK? is a really important one. So I thought, why don't we have a bit of an honest conversation about the connection between mental health, skincare, uh, and some of these things that I know other people will have struggled with as well. So that's what I wanted to do today. Uh, For this week's K-Beauty News Headlines, I actually came across uh, our a business, basically a business uh, newspaper, and they were talking about GP Club, which is a big South Korean manufacturer, wholesaler and retailer of cosmetics. They are the, the head parent company of a really popular brand, certainly in the Chinese speaking market called JM Solution. So some of you from Western countries might not be as familiar with this brand. It hasn't landed in the same way certainly in the markets that I'm most familiar with like Australia and the US but this is a really really popular one in China and I think also in a lot of countries that speak Chinese so what they are doing originally this company was established as a game console distributor back in 2003 but they expanded their business into new areas and they began selling cosmetic masks and beauty products into China in 2013 and by 2018 they had generated nearly half a million dollars in sales driven by their demand in China so what they are looking to do is they're gearing up for an initial public offering on the Kospi next year um, which is obviously the Korean Stock Exchange so they're saying that they have risen to unicorn status they've attracted 75 billion 
a one investment from Golden, uh, Goldman Sachs and that the deal is valued at up to $1.32 billion, which is not chump change at all. So the company that is leading the, I guess, initial public offering is going to be Murray Asset Securities and then also Samsung Securities and Korea Investment as the underwriter. So this is a really big deal, basically. Um, their brand is, uh, the current model is someone that some of you guys might be familiar with. He is a really handsome um, actor called Jung Hae-in. So he is their current brand model. Uh, but I, I just thought that was a really interesting deal, particularly because I know it will be a brand that not a lot of you guys have necessarily heard of. So JM Solution, the parent company, gearing up for their first IPO on the Cosby next year. That was the headline. I saw that across a couple of different platforms. So interesting news right there. It shows you the kind of money that we are talking about in this industry when it comes to things like IPOs. So that is quite impressive. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do this week, I mentioned to you guys a couple of weeks ago that I want to start a a quick Q&A segment where you can send me your question that you have that you would like answered. Anything can be like personal routine recommendations. It can be product recommendations basically whatever you would like and I will answer it on the podcast so that we can benefit other people that maybe have the same question as you or maybe people just you know who want to hear about what other people are doing what other people are thinking about so this was the question and this was from Catalina in Malaysia she says hello Lauren I have a question as per your idea on the Jeju podcast episode Even though I have all the products for the 10-step K skincare routine, which ones are a must for every night and which ones are not? And if so, how often? Sometimes I'm in a rush at night and I cannot do all the steps, but I would love to know how to prioritize and select for twice a week, for example. So great, great question. And Catalina, I'm in exactly the same boat as you. I do not have time to do 10 steps every single night. So the easiest and most obvious things that you can cut out of your routine just because you don't need to do them every night anyway is exfoliator. That is definitely not an every night thing for most people. The other one is a sheet mask. If you have a look at like the guide to the 10 step K beauty routine, sheet masks will often be included. That's just not sort of an every night thing. You definitely don't have to do it. Uh, The other thing I would say that you can probably cut out if you are time poor is eye cream. You don't have to do that every night and it's not a must for everyone every night. If you're really just whizzing through your routine, uh, then you can easily cut that out. I think that honestly the most important steps if I could condense it even further for you I think your cleansing balm or oil to remove your makeup sunscreen and dirt is definitely do not skip that your cleansing foam whatever you're using for that I wouldn't skip that now toner I always I always use as a general rule but you could substitute that in with an essence instead if you wanted to Um, and then you you could even just do your serum and your moisturizer if you want wanted to, or you could swap out your moisturizer for a sleeping mask. That would be a really, really good way to condense it right down. But straight off the bat, I would say eye cream, sheet mask, exfoliator. Don't worry about doing them every night. Two to three times a week for most exfoliators is totally fine. And sheet masks are the same. They're really optional. So that is the way that I would just really cut down on time. And then wait, that way you're really just slapping a couple of things on your face. You're not waiting for, you know, a scrub or a mask to come off. You can really get through it quite quickly. Um, My routine, if I'm doing it in a hurry, doesn't take me more than about, I would say, five minutes, even with all the steps. So you really don't need to spend a whole heap of time. But those optional steps, I would just take them out on the nights that you're busy and then add them in on the nights, maybe on the weekend. Like I often do my sheet masks and exfoliation on either Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, just because that's one of the nights of the week where I've got a little bit more time up my sleeve. So that would be my recommendation. I hope that is helpful. And if you have a question, then please hit me up. Let me know. You can DM me on Instagram, which is how Catalina got in in touch, or you can send it through to our 
email address at Style Story, which is admin at stylestory.com.au, or you can get on Facebook, whatever is easiest for you, and just let me know what your questions are. And we'll do this again next week. So that is my plan. <laughs> so on to today's topic, which is about skincare and self-love. So I've seen a lot of bloggers in the community, particularly in the Asian beauty community, uh, speaking about this over the years and, you know, how their skincare routine helped when their mental health wasn't the best. And I know for me, having suffered from really awful cystic acne when I was a teenager, I think there is often a very powerful connection between loving your skin and loving yourself. You know, I think often in the media, um, people tend to put down having a, you know, an elaborate skincare routine or people that like using a lot of different products in their routine and they're like, oh, well, that's just vanity. And I really, really don't agree with that. Um, the other thing I really take, I guess, uh, issue with is the sensationalist kind of terms that are often used to describe Korean skincare in the media. And that's words like elaborate and daunting and intricate. So for me, and I know I've spoken about this before, the K-beauty routine is a lot more than just a set of steps that need to be followed or even like the search for perfect skin, which let me tell you as someone that has been using skincare products now for a very, very long time, I don't think there is any such thing as perfect skin. I think it's all about caring for the skin that you're in, the skin that you have, and learning how to love it. Um, and I, I know that that can be really, really hard for people that have had these painful skin conditions. Things like acne and eczema, I know that there is a link between skincare and self-esteem. And I think think there is often a really important healing process that is involved, particularly once after you've had something traumatic like that. And if it's on your face, it is compounded a lot because if it's on your face and you're suffering from, you know, an acne breakout or really bad eczema or dermatitis or something like that, and the scaling and scabbing that comes along with it, that is also the face that you put out to the world. That is the face that you greet you, the people in your life with. That's the face that you greet your friends, your family, and it's the first thing that people notice about you. And it's so disheartening and disappointing when, you know, you're out in the world and that's all people see. And I certainly remember when I when my acne was at its worst that people, you know, even things that they thought would be helping, like I remember some of my mum's friends who were really, really sweet and they'd be like, oh, love, your skin's looking much better. But even though that's like positive reinforcement, to me, it just sounded like all they see ever is my skin. I'm, I'm not anything more than my skin. And they notice when it's bad, but they also notice when it's better. Like that's how connected my skin is to me that even when it looks good, all they're thinking is, oh, it looks so much better. So I think a lot of people will know what I'm talking about with that. And I know other people have spoken about the connection between skincare and mental illness as well. Um, and Jude at 50 shades of snail is one of those people. I remember she did a really beautiful blog post, um, talking about how her skincare routine and particularly her Asian beauty routine has helped her through periods of, um, when her mental health has not been the best. So I think there are a lot of people out there like that. And for me personally, learning how to love my skin again and discovering K beauty products went hand in hand because I felt like I had to hide my skin and my bad skin defined me as a person. So for me, that was a real journey towards learning that, you know, for one, I was more than my acne and also that I could actually do something enjoyable while I was caring for my skin. I found the whole process of going to a dermatologist um, and speaking to specialists about my skin and being on medication and all of that. I found that awful. I found it such a pain, you know, I would be in the dermatologist's office that he would look at my skin for literally like 15 seconds. And then he'd be like, okay, you know, use this, that or the other. And those products, which 
I find very <laughs> funny that they're the products that people are going crazy about now, but they are products that would make my skin flake, dry out, break out, patchy, impossible to cover with makeup. Um, probably some of you will know the kinds of products that I'm talking about. And, you know, everyone these days is like, oh my God, I absolutely love it. Whereas for me, there was nothing to love about that. That was like literally the definition of something that was given to me as um, a medical treatment to cure a medical condition. So it did not make me feel like, you know, my skin care was sexy at all. It just made me more self-conscious. It made me want to hide my skin even more because even, you know, anyone that's gone through particularly an acne treatment course will know that your skin gets so much worse before it gets better. And that is just even more disheartening to know that you're taking the medication, to know that you're applying all of the products that the dermatologists are telling you to do and for months on end your skin is getting worse not better um that just uh, for me was the worst part of it it was just like when will it ever get better like i'm doing all the things for you please just love me back you know like and not to mention dermatology and getting those kind of services in many countries that's so expensive it's a lot of money so it's just the whole process for me i found to be really depressing um and not as in the condition the mental health condition depression but just as in like my outlook on life i was just like this is just so unfair all these people out there with you know beautiful skin that do absolutely nothing for it and here i am spending you know 300 australian dollars at a time to go and see this dermatologist who literally has me in the chair for five minutes uh, and then off I go and my skin gets worse and worse, you know, before it gets better. That for me was my experience with skincare pretty much all the way up until I went on my uni exchange to Seoul, which was 10 years ago now. So that was 2011. And I discovered Korean beauty products for the first time. And I think the thing that really struck me the most was that unlike pretty much all of my previous interactions with skincare, the process of discovering and learning about K-beauty for me was something I got really excited about. Every time I would go into a store here, there would be new products that I'd never heard of, new ingredients I never tried, the little samples to test. And that just really, I think, encouraged me on my journey. I fell in love with each new store. Like I still remember the first one I went into, I'm almost positive, was skin food. And it was... I was just like, what is this? They're so beautiful. They're so cute. They have such nice packaging. And then, you know, one store after another. And I, back in the day, they all had like a theme. So Etude House, which I'm pretty sure they've changed the name now and it's just Etude, is it was a, like a, pl a playful princess kind of theme. So you go into the store and it was all done up and all the cosmetics were like perfectly in line with the theme. If they had a princess theme, like the lipsticks, the blushes, the mascaras, everything was like done to perfection right to that theme. Skin food, obviously a fairly easy concept. They were just taking fruits and uh, things like that and turning them into the products. So all of the packaging was around that. If the product was honey, it would be in a honey pot with a little honey scoop inside to get the stuff out so everyone had just nailed the concept so well it was so much fun I feel like over the last 10 years a lot of the, the brands have definitely blanded out a little bit more and tried to modernize so unfortunately some of the brands have, have kind of lost that um, but th back in the day that's what it was like for me and as I found it I fell in love I guess with each new store and each new brand you know, I started giving the products that I'd found back um, to my f friends and family back in Australia, and they loved them too. And I think that's what really kickstarted a new phase for me, um, a new journey into researching the new products, matching them to the various skin types and problems that friends and family had, uh, learning the science behind the skincare and the ingredients. And I think the big difference for me if I could pinpoint it, is that at that point, I felt like I became an active participant 
in my skincare journey. So rather than sitting in someone's chair and then being like, oh, still not looking better, try this, try that. You know, and they, I, I totally understand the dermatologists don't have time to sit there with everyone and explain everything that they're recommending. But for me, it felt like very much, very paternalistic, very much top down approach where it's just like, do this, do that. And I had no idea really why. No one sat there and explained the mechanisms of the drugs that they were prescribing you know maybe maybe they did in the beginning but you know after you've been on that train for so many years people just assume that okay you know you're familiar with this you've been here before you've done this before so one of the things that I loved the most about discovering K-beauty was I was in charge of picking out the new products to incorporate into my routine unlike all of the really uninspiring dermatologist recommended stuff at the local chemist that you know I, I still remember the stuff that my dermatologist was like just use this don't use anything else and I was like but 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 and he was like no nah, just use that and I was like, oh gosh like I found you know k-beauty products were just so beautifully packaged and beautiful to use the textures everything about them I just found so much more inspiring because the dermatological angle and scientifically proven part was still there but it wasn't the only appeal the products themselves were a feast for the eyes the skin the heart everything like I wanted to use them whereas the products that I had used up until then the cleansers the moisturizers like oh my gosh I can still think of them and they're just like Oh, they were just awful. It was like way to announce to everyone that you have like a skin condition. That's what it felt like. It's just like, these products are not pretty. They're not cute. Like they're just so clinical looking. And funnily enough, some of those products have started trending again on like TikTok and stuff. And every time I see them, I honestly am so triggered. I'm like, this stuff is not fun at all. <laughs> Why are people getting so excited about it? But I think that's definitely my own hang up. Like I'm not going to put that one on the younger kids. That is definitely all me. But that was the kind of stuff that I had to use. And it was just like, I don't want to use that stuff. I want to be able to use the normal products that everybody else is using. And for so many years, I just couldn't. So that for me was such a big thing with Korean beauty products. I had never seen anything like it before. And to this day, I still think... Korean beauty products are some of the most beautifully packaged products in the world and the brands that are really nailing their packaging uh, among the western brands invariably have taken a lot from K-beauty brands if not totally swiping um, their styles and things like that so packaging I will admit has become a lot more important for a whole range of different brands but I, the other thing I think that really really helped with me is the process of using Korean beauty products in itself I found it to be really therapeutic and calming because your routine involves things like patting rubbing and dabbing products into your skin taking the time to massage them in even things like sheet masking you know it's not essential you don't have to do it but it feels indulgent and relaxing and you can take time out from your day and I find that you know when you're doing a mask if it's a sheet mask, if it's a sleeping mask, you know, you're just literally uh, for like with our jelly co mask and we made the little silicone brush with it. You can just rub it really lightly into your skin. And when you're doing that, you're not focused on a million other things. You can just enjoy that 10 minutes to yourself or however long it takes and just like, I, I guess, have a moment of peace where you're not running around and doing anything else. So I think for me, the journey to self-love has really been linked to my Korean skincare journey. And I totally credit K-Beauty with giving me more confidence in my skin again. I mean, obviously, the acne that I had was not going to be able to be cured through just topical skincare products alone. I had to take multiple courses, lots of drugs for a lot of years that got it under control. Um, you know, topical creams, all of that. Like I had very, very severe cystic acne, um, not just a couple of pimples um, and deep, really, really painful uh, cysts. So for me, that, that whole process, the medical part of it was necessary. But I think what came after that is 
gave me a lot more healing and just felt a lot more like getting back in touch with my skin again after so many years of feeling like it was just, you know, the worst part of me, I guess, and something that I wanted to hide away, didn't want to talk about. Um, so I, I feel like for me, my K-beauty obsession, <laughs> which yes, it definitely is an obsession, I will admit that, has given me an appreciation for my skin and the power that it has, I guess, to heal itself. Uh, it gave me the tools to take care of my skin and with products that I have researched, selected, that I look forward to using, that I've ta talked to other people about, and it's also given me a great way to take time out for myself and to enjoy some me time as I do my skincare routine. So I really do not think that skincare is about vanity for a great many people. I think for a lot of people, it really is about that. It's about self-love. It's about self-care, self-appreciation, maybe getting back in touch with themselves after many years of feeling like not themselves. And for people that have actual, you know, diagnosed mental health conditions, I know I've, I've read a lot that having a reason to get up out of bed and, you know, a purpose, even if that is just doing a skincare routine, I know a lot of uh, other people that I've spoken to have said that that has really been so important for them. It's like, if I can't do anything else today, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my skincare. And so I thought on a day like, are you okay day, it would be I know it's a little bit deeper than we usually talk about on this show, but I do think it is really important. There are so many things going on in other people's lives that we just, you know, probably never think about. Um, you know, for I know for a lot of other people, when I did have acne, I remember my dad saying to me, he's like, it's just a couple of pimples. And I was like, it's not just a couple of pimples. But I know for other people, it can be really hard to see... I guess the pain that other people are going through, the trauma, maybe um, the mental health problems that they're going through, um, what they're experiencing in their life. So I thought this is a really good opportunity to ask the people around you, are you okay? Listen to them, I guess, encourage them, check in, just check in with them. People are going through all sorts of things, some that you can see, some that are more visible and some that you can't see as well. So hopefully I think it would be great if everyone could just take a couple of seconds and ask the people around them, you know, don't wait until someone is visibly distressed or in crisis. I think make some time in your life to just check in with some of the people around you and to see how they're going because you might be surprised when you ask them how they are going, what's really going on for them. So that is all I had for you guys today. I hope that you are going okay in your life. And if not, if there is something going on that you have someone that you can reach out to, my DM box is always open. You can always reach out to me. Um, and yeah, not to get too heavy and depressing, but I know this is a really, really stressful time for everybody. This whole pandemic has just been dragging on for way too long and it's gotten to the better of a lot of us. So if you fall into that boat, just know you're not alone. These are really difficult times for everybody, but sometimes it can be good to just, you know, step out of yourself and your bubble and what you're experiencing and turn to someone around you and just check in and see how they're going. And, you know, maybe they're totally fine, but just maybe you might have that chat with someone that really is struggling and that could be the difference for them. So that is all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, I would really appreciate a review and um, some some stars if you, if you can spare them. And other than that, until next week, I will see you on Star Story. 